There are two approved anti-VEGF uh, therapies, mm -hmm. right? There's a flibercept and ranibizumab. Mm -hmm. Do you have a preferred one on the formulary? We do not, and, and most of this is, is actually within medical policy, at least in our plan, because it's something that's injected, it's not something that a patient can go to the pharmacy and purchase. So it is, it is under medical policy, and for this we have all three available. Do you have a preferred one? We do not. Now, when you said, we do not, I heard this groan mm -hmm. to your right. No, no. <laughs> internally, internally, internally. Well, internally. We removed Sean Cobb's here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So clearly, at least to my ear, there was a disagreement. Here. Yeah, no, I, mean, I, think, I think in many markets around the country, there is a preference among payers for physicians to use cheaper agents. Right. Maybe, yeah. maybe you guys don't agree with that, but I think that's pretty obvious around the country. Please correct me if that's wrong. No, I, I, I would not disagree with you at all in that statement. I, I, I believe that's very true. And so we actually, we try to be good shepherds. We really do as retina specialists, I think, across the country. So I mm -hmm. often will start patients with bevacizumab because my local payers have asked me, either directly in writing or through a phone call, look, can you use more off-label, please? Um, because it's expensive. And, and, mm -hmm. and I respect that. I, I don't want to bankrupt the country if that's where we're going or whatever. But So I often will start with bevacizumab. But I make sure the patients know that the reason for that is not because I think it's better. And it's not because I think it's safer. It's a pure financial reason. All right, so let, let me paraphrase that conversation mm -hmm. in as dramatic and unfair a way as possible. Hello, Mr. Jones, I've got a really good drug for you, but he won't let me give it to you. Is that it? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I find the exact opposite with patients. When I explain some of the financial dynamics associated with the selection of an agent, a lot of patients are willing to try an agent that's less expensive. Really? I think there's sometimes there's a feeling like they're, they're adding to the greater good by saving money uh, to whoever's helping them pay for their care. It's funny, I've had a couple patients that have come in with like, you know, a Wall Street Journal article in hand saying, these greedy doctors, they're using the expensive yeah. drugs, which I think is ridiculous. And they're the patients that want the expensive So they drugs. often start with, I've had a couple <laughs> patients that wanted to start with bevacizumab. In fact, in both of those patients, it didn't work that well. Uh -huh. And then eventually they said, look, can we go yeah. to the expensive stuff? And they got substantially better. And, yeah. and we shouldn't forget the co-insurance because yep. it can add up after uh, Absolutely. I think that's a while. huge challenge and ironically the way that some of these are uh, the plans are structured and some of the assistance programs that are offered for patients <laughs> ironically the more expensive drugs are the ones that are less expensive for the patient out of pocket yeah it, it's funny you bring that up I mean there's all these different plans now where actually it's actually cheaper for me to use on-label drug for the patients out of pocket expenses than it is for them to use bevacizumab because there's these copay plans that are some type mm -hmm. of nonprofit organization yeah. well let me ask I'm going to ask the same question to the payers and to the clinicians, which is, to whom do you have a responsibility? Uh, is it to the patient, or is it to the entire health care budget of this country? That is, are you going to bankrupt the country for this guy sitting in front of you, or do you think that you need to think of the bigger picture? As a physician, my absolute requirement is to the patient sitting right in front of me, and it will always be to that patient and that patient alone. And what about you? Oh, I wholeheartedly agree, but you have to acknowledge that there are, as, as we have already, that there are significant cost restraints uh, that we all have to deal with on a daily basis. And uh, it, it would be nice that we were in a world that we didn't have to deal with those, but unfortunately, the, in reality, we do. I, yeah. I do find that, I mean, I have one more thing to add. Yeah. I find it frustrating that we are possibly the only country in the world that doesn't bargain with pharmaceutical companies on prices of drugs before they're accessible to the general public. I find that staggering. Why is it that we as physicians are the ones that are, that are made to be the ones to regulate price? Well, you're actually not, he is too. I mean, carriers and physicians both, right? But let me pose the same question to you. Is it your responsibility to ensure that an individual patient gets the absolute best treatment, or are you there to protect the entire healthcare economy? Um, so I'm going to take a middle road with that, of course. Oh, don't do so, that. So who's ever, from, from a payer standpoint, it's often who's ever paying the premium is actually our primary concern. So it may be an employer that's paying the premium. It may be the, the, the government that's paying the premium. Um, at the end of the day, it may not be the individual patient sitting in front of, uh, of either Jared or Charlie in terms of who is actually paying the bill for that treatment. But again, um, I know you took a middle of the road here, <laughs> yeah. but again, Mr. Jones' sight is getting worse. He needs a drug. There's an expensive drug and a cheap drug. If you give a lot of people the expensive drug, we run out of money. So is your, is your allegiance to Mr. Jones or is your allegiance to 
the pot of money that has to be protected for everybody? And the answer is yes. I know. It, it is. <laughs> okay. It is. <laughs> but it's tough, isn't it? No, absolutely. Absolutely. It, it is tough. And, and my answer would be very similar, is that we, we want the best for each individual patient, but in the context of the population. And our job is to be advocates for the population. But often the patient doesn't care. The patient says, but I want the best treatment for me. I mean, there's a drug out there and it's going to be better than what I'm getting. Please pay for it. And, and so in this particular case, though, we, we would have no barriers to that. So, you know, it, it, it is up to the physician choice and in the conversation with his, his or her individual patient. So, so for this particular area, it's, 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 not, it's not a conversation.